Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And I think I need to adjust my tripod just a little bit so that it's all settled. Mr. Boo Radley is jumping off the bed, jumping on the bed. He is having such a day. I just got home um, from Cousin Fun Day not too long ago and filmed a video in the kitchen. Peter does stuff video, a haul. And um, I was getting ready to vlog and I thought, I had heard this thing in this uh, show that I was watching last night and I was like, you know what? I really want to talk about this in a Peterisms video because I loved what I heard last night on the show. So I finished the show last night called Apples Never Fall which was the TV adaptation with Annette Benning of the book by Leanne Moyarity called uh, Apples Never Fall. Now, if you've never heard of that book, she also wrote Big Little Lies, um, I think Nine Perfect Strangers, which turned both of those into TV shows as well. I love Leanne Moyarity. The first book of hers that I read was um, Big Little Lies. Is that what it's called? Big Little? I think that's what it's called. Anyway, I love her book so much. And um, so I was really excited to watch this show. And... My best friend, Tanya Jean, told me that she loved it. My cousin Caroline told me that she loved it. And so I was really excited to watch it. I read the book about two years ago when it first came out. It's her newest book. When I first, um, when it first came out, I read it like right away. And um, so I was really excited to watch the show. And I'm also a huge fan of Annette Bening. So I was like, okay, let's see what she does in the show and stuff like that, right? So anyway, um, the show is about a couple that, it, well, the book actually took place in Australia, but the TV show takes place in West Palm Beach, Florida. And um, it's a show about this couple that owns this tennis training camp kind of place, um, which is interesting because I grew up going to a lot of those tennis camps, playing tennis in the summer, playing in leagues all year long, having coaches, things like that. Little unknown fact for those of you that don't watch my vlog or haven't watched my other videos. I was actually um, being trained when I was growing up to be a professional tennis player. And so that's a huge part of my, my youth is playing tennis like literally every single day as long back as I can remember. And so I love anything that has to do with tennis and any books or TV shows or movies about tennis. And so when I started reading this, you know, two years ago, I loved it right away. And it's about this couple and they owned um, this uh, tennis kind of like training. It wasn't, it was like a, a tennis, like a, a racket, like a club. It was like a racket club and um, this tennis club. And they had owned it for years and years and years, and they had actually trained this one guy that went to be a Grand Slam winner and things like that. And then the book starts with them retiring, and then shortly after that, the mother, who is played by Annette Benning, um, she it goes missing. And so the whole book is about kind of going back and forth and explaining like what led up to it and why is she missing and where is she at and is she, has she been killed and what's going on. And it's fantastic. Um, I actually watched the first two episodes the night before, <clears throat> or I think I watched one episode the night before, one and a half episodes or something like that. And then I watched the rest of it last night. I actually sat down just to watch like two episodes and I was going to go to bed early and I binged the rest of the show. It was really, really good. It was that good. Um, so, yeah, I watched the whole thing last night, but what I wanted to talk about on here today was that, you know, there was a lot of discussion on there about marriage and problems in marriage and how to keep a marriage together. That was a huge part of the show. And whenever I do Q&As, I always get a lot of questions about our marriage and staying together and, you know, marriage counseling, which, you know, I've talked like ad nauseum about marriage counseling and counseling in general, any kind of therapy I am, you know, a firm believer in for whatever reasons. I don't, I, I, I think often in society we wait until things have almost gotten too bad with ourselves or in a relationship to find or seek counseling or therapy when actually I think if we found it much sooner, you know, just to have a sounding board of someone to go into and talk to once a week or once every other week or whatever about just what's going on in our life for those of us that can afford it, um, because it is a privilege for a lot of us out there. There's not affordable mental health care in our in the United States, and so um, for those of us that can't, I've never understood if you can why you wouldn't. It's it's to me. It's definitely a necessity today, but it's also, I, I see it to some degree as like the ultimate self-care, something that I probably will do for the rest of my life, no matter what's going on, you know? 
And so, um, but we get a lot of questions, you know, on, Q, on couples Q and A's. I get a lot of questions about marriage and problems in marriage and how do you work through them and, you know, how do you initiate marriage counseling and things like that. And she says this line in the show, and this won't ruin it for anybody, but she's having this discussion about why she stayed in this marriage when things got bad. And I have it written down on my phone downstairs when I'm uploading a video on it, so I wanted to kind of like memorize it. But she says something to the effect of, there will always be reasons to leave. The trick is, are there, the, the better question is, are there reasons to stay? And I think, you know, that's always an interesting question. I can remember when I was in my last relationship and, you know, I, we had been together for, it was almost six and a half years when we broke up. And I, honest to God, thought that I would be with him for the rest of my life. And I've said many times, I think that if we had entered counseling three or four years before, when things got, started getting really bad, for whatever reason, I don't know that we would have broken up. I don't know that maybe we could have worked through things. I don't know. I mean, I, I never will know. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty. But, um, you know, by the end... I had really worked out every scenario in my head of how to make it work and, and how to stay and things like that. And in fact, I've shared this before that, <clears throat> so we broke up on, I think it was like the 6th or the 7th of December. And I can remember at that time, like Thanksgiving was not good for us. And it just was like, we, you know, we, <clears throat> went to my family's and we went to his family's and it just was, it just was, there was a sad undertone to all of it. I kind of knew it was like, um, the last Thanksgiving and actually, his work Christmas party was the night before we broke up. And I can remember going to that Christmas party. And at that Christmas party, I can remember thinking to myself, this will be the last Christmas party that I go to as his partner. I just knew it. I had this feeling inside and I hadn't even made the decision, you know, to leave yet. I was really hoping, I thought to myself, like, if we can just make it through Christmas, because we loved Christmas so much. Christmas was always really important to us. In the last couple years, we had gotten a cabin in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, because I had started wanting to do that because I love the movie Smoky Mountain Christmas. Christmas with Dolly Parton and so we would go down there to kind of like and initially to recreate it but then we had started taking my mom and going down there and things like that and so that was something that I loved to do and we had a cabin rented for that Christmas and I thought if we can just get through Christmas Christmas is always so good for us you know maybe we can make it through Christmas but like a week before um, we broke up, I had this conversation with my dad on the phone and I remember I said to my dad and my dad's always been so wise and you know I think there's this point with your parents when you realize that all those that, that advice and all that those suggestions for most of us I know that there are some parents out there that maybe you know aren't the greatest parents in the world or you know parent figures or don't give their kids the best advice but my dad always has and I think there was a point where you know for a very long time I always thought I knew what was best and then I realized that all that those that advice and the suggestions my dad had given me for years was only because he wanted me to have the best life possible and to help me and there was a turning point in my life where I, if I started reaching out to my dad for advice, but if I was going to ask him for it, like I was going to take it. And I remember I called him and I, I was kind of at the point where I was like, I don't know what to do. And, um, I've shared this in videos as well, but I had made the decision that I, I wasn't going to talk to my best friend. I wasn't going to talk to my sponsor. I wasn't going to talk to any other friends about it. If I was going to make this decision, I didn't want to later look back and be like, okay, because we thought we were going to be together forever. And I was like, I don't want to look back on this and be like, well, somebody got in my head or they made me think a certain way. And that's why I left the relationship, you know, for whatever reason. And, um, so like a week before I did call my dad and I talked to my dad. I can't remember how long before it was, but I said to my dad, when did you know that it was like that you and mom were done and that it was time to like leave? Cause my parents had gotten divorced. Um, I think when I was like eight or nine and they got separated when I was like five. And, um, and I knew that that had been a really difficult decision for my dad. I knew it because we had talked about it for years. And I said, when did you know that it was kind of over for you and mom? And my dad calls me Pete and I'll never forget. I can hear him, you know, and he said, Oh Pete, he was like, if that's where you're at, it's already over. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, if you're already questioning, like, is it time? He was like, it's probably too far gone. He was like, I wish you guys had done something to like fix the situation, you know, before, cause they, they loved him, you know, and I, and I obviously did as well, but we were just too far gone at that point. And, um, and I learned a lot from that relationship to never let it get to that point again, you know? And even though I talk about with Alex and I, how we were like so close to divorce and stuff, 
what came from that past relationship where I just was like, I looked at him, I loved him as a person, I cared about him deeply, I still do. I mean, I haven't talked to him in years. I wish, I mean, I would be civil to him if I saw him. I don't have a need to have a relationship with my exes like a lot of people do. Um, and, but I wish him all the best. He's a great person. He's a great human being. And we just didn't work out, you know? Um, but I learned a lot from that. I learned to never let it get to that point. And even though I say with like Alex and I, before we entered marriage counseling, like we were like headed towards divorce. There was still that part of me that was like, it's not over. It did. It just, it didn't feel over with my ex and I, it felt done. It felt like it had been done for a long time, like two years, it felt like it had been done. Like we were just going through the motions. You know, people say like, you're just friends, you're just roommates, you're just sharing space. Like it very much felt like that. He was my best friend. I can remember when we broke up. So what happened was I had worked that whole next day after his Christmas party. That was on a Saturday night and I had worked that whole next day and I came home and it wasn't a typical day for me to work. I didn't usually work Sundays. And I came home and I remember I had the bat, my bag on my shoulder and I looked at him. He was just like sitting there just like one channel after another going through the TV. And I just looked at him and I was like, hey, what's going on? And he was like, we're either done or we're not and you need to make a decision. And I'll never forget the bag just dropped to my, from my shoulder to the floor. And I looked at him and I said, I, I think it's over. Like, I just, I don't. I don't, I think it's over. I don't think either one of us want to be here anymore. And it was like everything in that moment changed. I've said this a lot in my personal life. I don't know how much I've said it in my videos, but that moment where you say those words, it's like that person that you have known so implicitly and has had such an impact on your life, in that moment, everything changes and they're no longer in your life. And I felt that immediately. I mean, he got up and he started panicking and he was throwing a bag together and he's like, I got to get out of here. I got to leave. And he left, and I remember he called me later that night. He was, like, crying. He was like, you always book the hotel rooms. He was like, you know how to do all that kind of stuff. He's like, I can't find a hotel room. So I helped him find a hotel room. I booked a hotel room for him. And then I remember, like, he got settled and got a new apartment and stuff like that. And we didn't really interact a whole lot, you know? And um, we he we talked basically through Tanya. Like, he, my friend Tanya, he would call her because he was very close with her as well. And he would say, can you have Peter not be home? Because I'm going to come and get my stuff with the U-Haul. And he moved out. And I remember he got his new apartment. It was like two months later and I was really missing him. But I really missed the friendship, you know? In all honesty, at that time, like, I was not... And, and this is not, I don't think he was towards me either. I wasn't intimately attracted to him. I, I wasn't in love with him. I loved him as a person. I, I, he's a great person, you know? And, and we had great times together. I, I hate when people, when relationships are done, they say none of it was real. No, he never loved me. She never loved me. None of it was real. That's just not true, you know? There were a lot of moments in any relationship, and I'm not talking about abusive relationships in a situation. I'm talking about run-of-the-mill relationships, but in every relationship when it's over, I think we focus so much of the ending, and I don't think it really matters who ends what. I don't think it matters who breaks up with who. I think that's petty. Um, I, I always try to look at the good memories, you know, and remember the and and focus on those and be like, we had some really great times together. You really impacted me and formed me into who I am today. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that he was in my life. And I remember at about two months, you know, I had gone on some dates and stuff. And I just really was like, I'm not a good dater. I'm not like, I just... I'm always kind of wanting to be in a monogamous relationship long term and I just wasn't good at it and I really missed him. But I really missed the friendship was what I missed. And I remember calling him. We hadn't talked in a while and I and I begged him to come over and he said, "You you wanted to break up with me. Now let me get over you." And so and I'll never forget hanging up with that phone. I was like, "It's done." And I had a friend of mine at the time. She was like, "Yeah, I have two uh, Friends of mine that were a gay couple, they were together for like 10 years. They broke up for two years and they got back together. I always kind of thought that would be us. A month after that, I talked to him. He called me up. We had a very nice conversation. And um, because it was around the time that my mom had gotten sick. And so I was telling her, him some stuff about that because he was very close with my mom. And, you know, he said to me, he said, this is where it doesn't really matter who I think breaks up with who. But he said... I was done as well, but I didn't have the the nerve to break up with you. He was like, I didn't know what my life was like without you. Well, neither did I. I was terrified. 
I did not know who I was without him. And he didn't know who he was without me. We were best friends. But the intimacy, and not just the physical intimacy, but every part of the intimacy of what I know now as the 12 parts of intimacy was gone from our relationship. It was sad, you know? And he said, whether you had broken up with me or I had broken up with you, it was going to it was gonna happen eventually. You just were the one that said the words first. And he said, and honestly, I'm grateful for it. He was like, I want you to be happy. I'm happier now. We both deserve to be happy. You know, which was the reason why my dad initially left my mom. He was like, neither one of us are happy and one of us deserve to be happy. And I'm not going to stay in an unhappy marriage. And she deserves to be happy too. Maybe she'll find some happiness if I leave. And so... You know, I, I think had I not said those words, I think and waited through Christmas, I think eventually he would have said them and said, we're not happy together. We need to go our separate ways. It did, that's why it doesn't matter who breaks up with who. Um, unless it's kind of like a blind side, you know, and whatever. But, you know, I look at that relationship in comparison to when Alex and I were at our very worst. And that line in that show last night when she says... There are always reasons to leave. The better question is, are there reasons to stay? At the end with my ex, the only reason to stay was that he was my best friend. But I can remember seeing these people that were like looking at each other across from dinner and it was like, and they were like older and they couldn't wait to get home, you know? And they were just still so in love. And I wanted that. And I felt like I deserved that in my life, you know? That was not existing in our relationship anymore. Like I said, he's a fantastic human being. He is great. My family loved him. My friends loved him. His friends loved me. I mean, we just, that wasn't there for us anymore. I wasn't looking across him at a table. I was looking at, let's go home and, you know, watch some TV shows. I'm real excited about that, you know? And that, but that was always, every night, you know? And I didn't feel this deep sense inside of me other than I love this human being as a person. Which is great, you know, to have that towards somebody. For me, I wanted more. I wanted more. I wanted romantic love. And that was what I felt like I needed. And so that was all that was left. That was the only reason to stay was that he was my best friend. When we broke up, I felt like I lost my best friend. Honestly, I did. When, I, when Alex and I were at the point where we were getting divorced... Or not, we weren't getting divorced. We had, you know, filed papers or anything. But we got into therapy to do that. It was like... Um, to like work on our marriage and then we were going to give it a year. And then at the end of the year, if nothing was better, we were going to, you know, go our separate ways. It never felt done to me. It never felt like I still, like I was like found him desirable. He still found me desirable. We still laughed at each other's jokes in between the fights. There was a, there was a desire for each other that went past physical, obviously, that we wanted each other in our lives. It wasn't done yet. It never felt done to me. And, you know, when she said that in the show, the better question is, are there reasons to stay? I always felt like with Alex at the end, there were so many more reasons to stay than there were to leave, you know? There were so many more reasons to work through it and make it work, and he felt the same way. And that was a huge part of what came out in our marriage counseling was that the reasons to stay outweighed the reasons to leave. It would be so easy, and I think that so many people today see it as this easy thing just to cut your losses and start over. But to to rebuild from the foundation up a relationship, a marriage, whatever, and, and really work on it intensively builds a stronger union between the two of you, you know? It really builds a, a really strong relationship. And we did the work, you know, to do that. We weren't willing to do that work with my ex and I. We, we weren't willing to do that. And he had brought up marriage counseling or ther we weren't married, but couples counseling. Counseling. And but neither one of us were really willing to do that. Alex and I were, and we put in the work, and we put in the effort. It would have been easier at that time to cut our losses and just start over and you know go our separate ways. But it was so much more valuable. And in retrospect, now looking back on years ago when we first started therapy, you know, marriage therapy and counseling, it's like our marriage today is better than it ever was. It's better than it was the day that we got married. It was better than the day that we met. It was better than two. I mean, it's like our marriage now is, and, and, and we still argue. They're still, you know, we don't fight or anything like that. We don't talk over each other really that much, but there, I mean, we talk over each other, but we don't like, you know, always, it's not always about having to get our point. And we, it's like the condition of our relationship today It's and by no means perfect. I don't believe there's a perfect relationship out there, you know? Um, you know, we just, I just spent, you know, 10 days with my husband and I can remember getting home and like the next day it was like the silence of being at home. Like I missed him so much, but at the same time I was like, I really value my time alone. He values his time alone too, you know? And so it's, you know, 
the relationship is fantastic today. Of course, it's always, I mean, any relationship is going to have its ups and downs. But the ups and downs before where they were like this are now like this, you know? When people talk about being on the same page. We're definitely on the same page today. But I think that one of the reasons that always kept us going was the reasons to stay together totally outweighed the reasons to leave. Really, the only reason to leave was that it was the easier of two outcomes. It would have been easier at that time. I know it sounds so difficult to get divorced and go your separate ways, but in all honesty, it's a hundred times. Having done it and having stayed, and having done it with my ex and broken up and then having stayed with Alex and worked through it, trust me, the easier of the two is breaking up and going your separate ways. The harder one is sitting in a room with a therapist and talking about all the shit that you don't want to talk about and working through it and being 100% honest with your partner and having discussions you don't want to have to build a stronger foundation for your future. That's the harder outcome of the two, Right. But man, the payoff is fantastic. But I thought that was so poignant when she brought that up and she said, you know, it's it, there's always going to be reasons to leave, but the better question is, are there reasons to stay? And I think it's a great question to ask yourself, you know? It's kind of what my dad said to me to some degree. If, it's, if you're at this point, it's already gone, you know? And I can remember looking back and being like, the only reason to stay is that this person's my best friend, but I deserve more. I deserve more. And he does too. You know, he did too. I deserve to have somebody look across from me and be so in love with me that they'll fight for me, that they'll want me in their life, that they'll beg for me to be there. I deserve that. And somebody deserves that from me as well. I have a lot of really good friends, you know? I miss him being my best friend. But I have other best friends, you know? And I say this a lot, and I know this is rather crass, but I have a best friend, and I don't sleep with her, and I don't want to, you know? There's a reason why today I have a husband and I have a best friend, and I don't want to get those confused. I know there's a lot of people that are like, my partner is my best friend and stuff like that, and I think that's fantastic. I think that's great. That doesn't work in our relationship. You know, my husband needs a best friend, I need a best friend, and we need each other. I think that's great for couples that it works for. I don't dog that for anybody. But at the end, I would, the only question I would ask you is, like me and my ex, if the romance is gone, if the desire is gone, if the intimacy is gone, if you're, not sh if you're sharing more secrets with your other friends and you're sharing with your partner and all you have is that they're your best friend, then what's left? Because I want somebody to look across to me at a table and I want somebody to fight for me. I want somebody to desire me. I want somebody to hold on to me so tight that they won't let go. You know? I want that. I deserve that. My partner deserves that. My husband deserves that. You deserve that. Not for me, but you deserve that from somebody out there. So anyway, I just wanted to share that because I love that piece of that show last night. And I love you guys so much. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.